welcome to the For Fox Sake podcast, by the fans, for the fans. With all the news, views and discussion from two lifelong Leicester City supporters. It's your show, so get in contact, make yourselves heard, what's your opinion? The only Leicester City podcast that's by the fans, for the fans. This is For Fox Sake. Hello and welcome to For Fox Sake. My name is Pete Selby and alongside me is Mr Rob Hayes. Do you ever get bored of saying that? No, although I was thinking of saying something different and then... No. And then no. you just regressed back to your just, old ways. Yeah, standard, boring... No, not boring, but uh, the standard uh, intro, which I think works because... I like to think that people, when they listen to the show, they go, oh, good. Like As soon as that intro comes on, as soon as they hear the music, great. But then as soon as they hear that intro, they go, right, I'm back. I'm here. I, you know, This is one I want to listen to. Settles you in for the next half an hour-ish. It, it, it does. And it then, settles you down as well, doesn't it? Never. But like, um, but what it does, it, it gives them that sense of familiarity. And that, yes, it's like it's like getting into a bath. It's like, oh, that's, that's good, isn't it? That's nicely nice. That, I can that's listen. lovely and warm, like Pete Selby's voice, that bath. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but uh, and, and then I can listen for the next half an hour or so and just um, listen to about Leicester, what people think about Leicester. And, um, what and then do after, we think about Leicester? Well, that's the well, question. Well, no, but after about five minutes, they go, oh, bloody hell, they are fools, aren't they? They really are. Um, well, yeah. I disagree we've, we've with nothing. We've well, actually, never claimed to be anything else, though, have we? No, and um, we've always claimed we never make any preparation for the show, which we don't. Uh, we just say what we think. But I will start by saying one thing, though. If you do disagree with anything, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Don't just shout it in the car or in the bath or wherever you are. Oh, those for Fox 8 pod yeah, people. Just let us know. Let us know. We'll say at the end of the uh, show about the Twitter and about Facebook and all that. But let us know if you disagree. Tell us which part you disagreed with or which view. And then tell us because that's what we want. And then we'll bring it up on the next podcast. Yeah, I will say that, you know, no one is wrong or right. Um, Everyone's got an opinion. And then once we discuss it, then we'll end up deciding that I was right in the first place. That's normally how it works. If we ever have a disagreement. Is that, was that Brian Clough who said that? What? That we'll have a discussion if, if, and then, you, yeah, and then we'll, we'll just, eventually come to the yeah. reasoning that I'm right anyway. Yeah, something. it was something along that lines. But we will definitely consider your opinion yeah. and discuss it. I don't know whether he said it in um, exact words. I think there was a... Pete Selby is the hic- new Brian Clough. There was a hiccup and a... Pass you, me another. You've that been, one, that's terrible. Hang on. We're two minutes in. You've been likened to a warm bath and Brian Clough. Yeah. Leicester anyway, versus but- Arsenal. Nil-nil. Uh, the only team to do the double over as last season... Going into it off the back of a disappointing defeat to Hull, which we won't talk about in too much detail, but I was happy with nil-nil. Were you? I was. Um, again, I spoke to a lot of people who are not fans of Leicester and who obviously didn't watch the game as well because they, um, they're they talking absolute nonsense. Nil-nil against Arsenal for a start. Just look at that. It's a good result. Arsenal, as much as they're in, they've got you know a few issues going on, they are still a good team. It was champions versus runners up, um, but a, a good result. Any any point against Arsenal or against Man City or against Manchester United or Chelsea is a good point. Yeah, and people were saying, "Oh, let's uh, look at last week's results." And Arsenal got beat four three by Liverpool, but you can't read anything into the first game for a lot of teams, I don't think. But especially not that one because Liverpool went and got themselves beat by Burnley. Didn't they? So, so the Arsenal Liverpool game wasn't a real reflection of how the season started or how they're going to be this season. Just like Leicester Hall, I don't think was. But exactly, those saying that Arsenal aren't the team that they were because of the Liverpool results. Well, just look at Leicester. Are they the team that they were because of the Hull result? So, if you put a line through those two games, um, yeah, nil nil. Well, let's just start with the game. Leicester reverted back to form. They reverted back to a standard 4-4-2 with the players that we all know and the only person that was different was obviously Kante not there and it was Mendy, the uh, replacement um, for Kante. So we played with uh, Albright and Atwad one side, Mares, Vardy up top with Okazaki, the flat back four, now Huth was back from suspension, Schmeichel in behind and of course Mendy alongside Drinkwater in midfield. And I'll just say one thing from the start, Arsenal in the first half were mint. Yeah. 
They they played some fantastic football in there. We just, I mean, we couldn't get near them at some points. How you know how Arsenal can play? They're really silky smooth, uh, no end products, but just controlling the ball, lovely one touch passing. They were, you know, they, to be honest, they were a joy to watch in that first half. Um, I can see what the Arsenal fans' problems is because they don't have any any end products, especially when Giroud is on the bench. Why they haven't got another striker? They've got so many attacking midfielders, but no one has that number nine. I don't think Sanchez is an absolute number nine. He's I think he's a, all, no. he's a great player to have mm. just off the centre forward. You know, uh, he's still playing as, as a semi number nine, but um, he can't run the line himself. And Leicester, to be honest, we didn't really have a kick in that first half. But that saying, they didn't create any clear-cut chances. Schmeichel didn't have any really meaningful saves to make in, in that first half, and in fact, the game overall. So at half-time, I was quite relieved to get in at 0-0, yet we didn't look in immediate trouble. It's just that we didn't really have a kick. No, we looked a lot sharper, I think, than we did seven days before as well. And uh, you expect a team like Arsenal to come to the King Power and dominate possession. And it's a kind of... I said at half time to you that it would that it would kind of suit us this way rather than the, than Hull letting us have the ball. We were letting Arsenal have the ball because that's how we played for most of last season. Look at the possession stats. Uh, I know stats aren't an awful lot to go by, but we didn't have the majority possession in a lot of games, and we were just happy to to work hard, be diligent, and be structured in our four four and one that we got behind the ball and just leave Vardy past the ball. Uh, but I don't think we could break as well as we wanted to in the first half because the wind was a bit of a pain in the arse, wasn't it? it Nobody it could was, really yeah. judge it. But as you say, no, I was I was happy with nil nil at half time. I wasn't particularly worried, and I think that already we looked a lot sharper and more on the ball than we did seven days ago. Yes, I think the fact that our first half performance, I don't think we performed as well as we could, but I think that was because of the way Arsenal played. I think they played so well that they just didn't really give us a kick. It's interesting you mentioned the wind. It did swirl around. I think the wind was behind us in the first half. It's quite hard to tell um, in places because it was swirling. The one thing I think it made a lot of difference for was the uh, the crossing. The crossing for both teams was very poor. <laughs> Woeful, wasn't it? It was very poor for both teams. Uh, so half-time, nil-nil, but second half... The best thing about the second half, really, for me, and the overall um, results, was I didn't believe that Leicester would be any different from last year, really. There wouldn't be an amazing drop-off. There wouldn't be an amazing improvement. Um, And it just kind of confirmed that, because the second half could have been a second half from last season, easily. The way that they played, they soaked up pressure. I thought the defence, if we're going to pick a few players out, Let's go. In fact, let's go through the team. I thought the defence were absolutely magnificent. Arguably, I'd say it's possibly Simpson's best game. He had, yeah, he did have a great game. What yeah. a great game! A couple game of times had. his distribution let him down again, but that uh, that's not a massive part of his game. No, but he's a fullback, isn't he? he yeah. but he's a defensive fullback. He's like the, a centre. He's like he's like a defender who should play centre half, but he's too small. He's yes. You know, yeah. a lot of fullbacks are quite cultured. Fuchs has got a good left foot. A lot of fullbacks are failed wingers. Danny Simpson is just a centre half that didn't grow, any. He? He's he's a he's a failed centre half, isn't he? <laughs> he's um. But basically, the, the thing that he does he does well, and he did especially well was um. Because he's at fullback on the right, let's just say that the ball comes in from uh, the Arsenal right, the Leicester left, and in a diagonal sense. He comes across so well yep. because it comes over the centre halves and he comes across so well and covers, even if it's a very uh, a lot taller player he's with. And he was brilliant. Morgan and Huth, uh, I thought Fuchs was very good. Huth brings a lot of stability, we all know. But I thought Wes Morgan was a colossus that game. He was fantastic. There was one point. That that two-on-one where, oh. where I can't remember who the other player was, but Walcott had the ball and Morgan had a decision. Does he go and shut Walcott down? Does he back off and try and fill the space? He just waited long enough, forced Walcott into taking it on his own and then produced a heroic block. That that was a massive piece of defending. We said it. I think it was me and you commentating at the time, wasn't it? Yeah. We were just like that is a captain's piece of defending. It was. It was fantastic. He had a decision to make. Does he step up and try and play an offside? But the offside might not come because Morcott could just push it on and, and chase, which he did. Or does he take the decision by stepping back and following the ball and obviously putting himself in a bit of danger because of pace? And he did that, and it was a superb tackle and uh, fantastic. Schmeichel. Didn't have an awful lot to do. Saved well. I thought his handling was good. Yeah. Obviously, we in, we know he likes to punch. But I'm t- I'm thinking in terms of uh, shots. Um, there was a lot of times when a half shot or a block shot came in, 
And as soon as the ball was near Schmeichel, there were three or four Arsenal players around him and any slight error in handling would have been a goal, really. Yeah, he kept hold of a lot, didn't he? There was, I think there was one sort of swirling back post cross shot that he punched, which I wasn't 100% convinced with, but everything else, there was a deflected one that threatened to squirm in at the near post. He saved that. There was that um, free kick that swung over and beat everybody and bounced just in front of him. He clawed that one away. Yeah, he had a, he had a really good game. He did, and he came out and did that Superman dive as well for a, oh, for a header. the big header, yeah. And this, and this is the thing with Schmeichel. I know he's not everyone's cup of tea. Everyone likes the guy. You know, he's the vice-captain of Leicester. He's been there a while now. Um, he, everyone is he's, he's a real fan's favourite. But if you ask some people, including me, would you like your goalkeeper to be more, um, say, taller and... Be- um, better in the air. Better in the air by catching and, and commanding that way. I would probably say yes, but I've not got a problem with Schmeichel absolutely whatsoever. That's his style, and it works because the back. The best thing is the communication between him and the back two centre halves is superb. Yeah, his, they, his they distribution's great. His shot stopping's great. His decision making most of the time yeah. is good. He's quick across the ground. Is I think his lack of height. I say lack of height. He's over six foot still, but his lack of height for a professional goalkeeper lends itself to having better other qualities. If you stretch Schmeichel out by a couple of inches, he probably loses a little bit of his footwork that he's got. Yeah. Loses a bit of his uh, of his ability to sort of spread himself and be quite compact when he's one on one with the uh, with attackers. And we know he made an error in his distribution at Hull, but um, how many I, goals did we score from him? How many oh, breakaways last season? I've got I've got a friend who's probably not really a friend now, but he goes on so much about meaningless stupid stats and uh, one of his favourites is about Schmeichel being one of the worst distributors of the ball because 50% of it doesn't go to a Leicester player and I turn around and I say well when it does go to a Leicester player one more touch and it's in the back of the net yeah I mean yeah that that, that, was, that, was, that, a, that, that was a tweet coming in to, uh, for Fox 8 by the way just you heard that uh, that buzz. It's always going. Yes, it is. Um, Social media channels but, always going. So, so the the back uh, back four, back five were brilliant. Midfield, drink water, especially in the second half. Superb, Mendy. Now, I thought he played well. Thought he had a good game, but obviously when he went off, and I saw the replay. Now, I know on commentary we're meant to be well, impartial in a way, and also, um, you know, professional, control ourselves. But when I saw the replay of Mendy going over his ankle. <sighs> I, I don't. I th- hopefully, the people listening might have understood when I went. Yeah, it was one of them when it went. When that ankle went underneath him, it was one of them where, you just, oh, where your neck disappears, doesn't it? You just like. Mm-hmm. It, it it was or horrible, um, and I feared the worst straight away. I said, "This this could be Christmas." How desperate was he though to get back on and yes. ca- and carry on on his debut? Exactly. Like it's... the the physio immediately called for the stretcher and was doing the old rolly hand saying, "Sub him off." He and tried. Mendy, he Mendy tried. Got back on his feet and he. Came back on, hobbled about a bit, got some booze from the Arsenal fans. But I think fair play to him. Fair play. That yep. proves how much he wants to play football. And it must be so difficult to come in on your debut, having not started the first game and, and not come off the bench or anything. He didn't come on, did he, in the first game against Hull? No. Uh, no. No. So it's his first ever competitive appearance in a, in a Leicester shirt. And, and, and that happens, your ankle goes underneath you. I, I felt sorry for him, really did. And I think he d- he had a decent start to the game. Yes, he did. Um, I I like the way, and especially it will help with, in the way that we attack, is as soon as he gets the ball, um, instead of maybe dribbling forward because that won't be one of his strong points, he looks straight away out wide to the wings and he looks for a pass straight away. I've got the ball, I'm going to lay it off to someone else who can do more damage. And uh, I really like that about him. I was watching him quite closely in the first half and he really does sit deep in front of those defenders. So... Not got a problem with Mendy. He'll he'll grow into the role, and uh, it just hope that he's not seriously injured. Um, Mares quiet in the first half, didn't have a kick, but understandably so because of the way that Arsenal played. Second half, he grew more into the game, and of course, towards the end when he decided to dance around the entire team, and obviously his shot was blocked by Czech. Yeah, that was. I mean, it was argue if it went in. I mean, that's one of the goals of the season, isn't it? It's he's he'll be fine. He will be fine. There was a couple of chances for through balls which didn't quite work out, but again, not a problem. Like, don't worry about Mares. Now the contract's been sorted. I've not got a problem with him at all. What did you put on social media? Just Mares. Yeah, that's Mares. It. That's it. There's nothing else he's saying. We know how good he is, don't we, Leicester fans? Like, we know how good he can be when he's fully wound up, and he'll be fine. He'll be absolutely fine. It's just good to have everything put to bed now though isn't it there's not a single oh, yeah. question mark his performances no. now 
are for Leicester and for Leicester only. It's not for, oh, what's he got in the back of his mind? What's he got in the back of his mind? A massive pay rise. That's what he's got in the back of his mind. Yep. He's, he, he'll, he said he'll he's be happy fine. at Leicester. Yes, you could argue that him signing a new long-term contract is obviously him earning more money in the short term. He'll probably have a clause in there that says if if so-and-so X team or Y team comes in for me, then I'm allowed to talk to them for a certain amount of money. Uh, and you could argue that a longer contract makes his transfer fee higher as and if and when it comes. All of those are re- realistic arguments, but for now and for the foreseeable future, until at least the next transfer window, he's a Leicester player with no speculation surrounding him, which is only good for his concentration. Yeah, I can't see him going in January anyway. And and you, you, you're right. I mean, there was reports saying that there's no re- release clause at all. There's definitely going to be some I can talk to clubs. Of course clause. there is. There's all, there'll always be that uh, in players' contracts. I'll say it once again. I can't see him staying beyond next season, a bit beyond the end of this season. But and le- unless we do another, oh yeah, unless we win the Champions one. League or we win the league again. But the fact that he signed his new contract, first of all, he deserves it. He deserves the money because of what happened last year. But secondly, if someone comes in for him next season, how much money are they going to have to pay? Yeah, a lot. There's no, there's no minimum three release years clause. contract to buy out because oh. he's up to twenty twenty, isn't he now? You started at fifty. You've got to. Yeah, you're starting at fifty million. Because because for a player who was on what what should we say twenty twenty five maybe before this new contract possibly something like that. Yeah, oh, I'd say I'd say probably maybe maybe, maybe about a bit thirty higher. million thirty to thirty five million is what you would be thinking probably. No, I'm talking in terms of thousands of pounds a week that he was earning oh, on his right. previous contract. Twenty five thirty thousand pounds a week. Thirty odd, yeah. Yeah, for a player that's now up to a reported one hundred. With an extension of of years on his contract, the transfer fee, whilst it doesn't technically have to reflect the length of the contract, you are essentially buying a player out of his contract as well as paying for his services. So that that's going to bump his transfer fee up a lot. Oh, definitely to something like fifty, like you say. Yeah. Um. So Mara is not not a problem at all, and uh, all Brighton didn't have the best game. He really didn't. But they went back. It, it does a job for you though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. That that's the thing as well because we got that nil nil and at the start of would we have gone in at nil nil at the break if we maybe had a more attacking player on that side i i don't know um and obviously vardy up front but the one thing i'll say is that maybe or do you think that he brought musa on a little bit too late yeah there wasn't an awful lot of time for him to make an impact was there we we said when we saw him on the on the start on the bench to start with maybe 65 70 minutes or so. Bring him on. Give yeah, him a good 20-25 I- minutes to yeah. frighten the defence after Okazaki's ran his race. But Okazaki was off for Ajoa. Um He could and should have had longer, but I can't argue with the fact that ultimately we came out with a 0-0 draw based on the tactics that Ranieri employed and the substitutions that he used at those times will, will have contributed to that. If you bring Musa on earlier, you stretch the game out a bit, do you risk losing it 1-0? Potentially. Exactly. Um I mean, they brought on obviously a few of their players. We'll mention a few Arsenal players for a start. Koscielny, a good player. I mean, what's he's, it? He's all he, right, isn't he? He, he? I mean, you could just see he's a quality, quality centre half. I thought Holding had a decent game as well. Yep. Uh, I thought Grant Jacker in midfield was good. And then when they brought on players like Ozil, they're a very good team. And the game got really stretched in the final 20 minutes. And it was really exciting. And it was like last season. Um, we, v- we voted it game of the season last yeah, season, exactly. didn't we? And we lost. Uh, but basically, let's let's look at a few pinpoints, a uh, few points of the game. Now, penalties. Oh, Clattenburg. So the first one was in the first half. Um, We've watched numerous replays of this. I can, I can. At the time, I shouted penalty uh, when Drinkwater went over the through ball. Uh, the goalkeeper check came out. Vardy was with him. The ball spilled free, and then Drinkwater came in, sliding tackles, this, that, and the other. The one thing I'll say is I can see why it's not being given. Yeah, I can one hundred percent with that. Because one, yeah. it was very difficult. Because it was they the, the players' bodies would have been blocking the view of Clattenburg. And we watched it slow mo from several angles, yeah. and still weren't one hundred percent sure whether there was any contact on Drinkwater. Now, Alex, who was also co-commentating with us at the King Power, said. Well, arguably, if the player's legs there and drink water's had to hurdle it to go down, then the player's legs there, that's still a foul. But for in the penalty area, especially, you're gonna need some contact to be able to really give it, aren't you? Yeah. I, and, and and from uh, from what I've seen, it was inconclusive. I I agree. I I can see why it wasn't given. Um, 
at that kind of speed as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Um now uh hmm Musa hmm. who basically came on and um who was the right back would have been Bellerin. Bellerin. Um I had a bit of trouble with them too. I kept on getting them Who Bellerin and Monreal. Yeah. 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 Um two, two Spanish fullbacks. I'll let two you Two Spanish fullbacks. Um so anyway, he uh, Musa came on and basically uh, Bellerin Bellerin's a good player, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's a good player. Very quick, as very, well. very quick player, very solid international uh, Premier League fullback. You know, really, really top. Uh, Musa absolutely destroyed him in fifteen minutes. Mm. Absolutely destroyed him, and uh, when he got goal side into the penalty area along the byline, pretty much, um, and then there was a tangle of legs and went down, and the defenders behind him. Can you? Tell me, Rob Hayes, why that wasn't given? No. No is the answer. I cannot no. tell you. The, the thing that I... Uh, the only thing I can think of is that... You know how Vardy, when he was sent off, and there was that uh, tangle of legs, and Vardy kind of instigated the tangle of legs... Left, uh, left one trailing. By leaving his bit, leg yeah. trailing, but then still there was a real tangle. It wasn't like he was clipped. Um, I can only think that he thinks Moose has done that, but my problem is... If a player goes down because there is contact, that's a player going down on his own behalf, even though there is there is contact, so penalties can be given. Musa did not do that. Musa went to ground because the defender behind him had his leg between Musa's legs, pretty much, and there was a tangle of legs. The defenders behind Musa going towards goal. I can't think of any other re- I can't think of a reason why it's not been given. No. Apart from has Musa somehow left his leg behind him? He can't see the defender. He knows he's there roughly. He's going to hang his leg back to try and get a contact. Rubbish is he? It's I can't understand why. No, and we've we've looked at this objectively obviously because we've both said for the drink water penalty that we can see a lot of reasons why it wasn't given but also why a lot of people were appealing for it and why on first glance we thought it was. This one like you say, no reason whatsoever. And he, all he has to do is look at Bellerin's reaction. It's, he yeah. looked guilty as sin and, and the until goalkeeper. Clattenburg waved it away. And then Bellerin was like, yeah, I didn't touch him, promise. Clattenburg with his plum shirt and his long... And you notice the long sleeves. In August? Yeah, but you know why? Why? Well, it's a TV game. And what's he had done? What's he do? what, what did he referee in the final last year? He refereed the final of the Champions League and he refereed the final of the European uh, Cup. Yeah. And he's got tattoos on his arm on his wrists and that, going up his arm, and he's got um, like the trophy. Oh, he's not. Yeah, didn't you know that? No, I didn't know yeah, that. he's got tattoos of the finals that he's done on his arms and that. Now, if you look at that... And he's you... such an egotistical <laughs> man. <laughs> no, but if you oh, look at that, you go, okay, you know, if you're, if you're an Olympian, you have the Olympic rings and Rio and London. He's represented your country, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's well rep- done you. Technically, he's represented oh. his country in a way. No, but... Piddle off, didn't yeah. he? What's he going to get? He's going to get the FIFA shield on his arm. Oh, he hasn't got that, but no, he's got—he's literally got the trophy, and underneath, uh, like Berlin 2016, wherever the final was, I don't know where it was. Yes, um, it's a great achievement. Yes, it's a massive uh, moment in your in your official officiating career, but you shouldn't be noticed. You shouldn't. Nobody should care who ref the game. No, you should, you should be picked on your merit based on what you've done that season, and you should go entirely yeah. unnoticed throughout the entirety of the game. I, I don't... Not wearing bloody plum with some stupid <laughs> tattoos about some games that you've refereed that nobody cares that you ref them. Rant, rant, klaxon. Sound the rant, klaxon. It's not me. It's, it's, it's not for me. a change, it's not you. But Just, um, just frustrates me. I mean, I, it's not just based on that game that he did at Leicester Arsenal either. I just don't like the man. Well, Battenberg, I mean, I don't know whether he... he I mean, the thing is, I mean, a few people said he bottled it. I don't know, because he's a big ref, <clears throat> so he shouldn't bottle it. Bottle it means he's maybe a younger ref, or uh, but has he caved into the um, to the... The, the bigger team I don't know because we, you know we won the league we get lots of penalties because of the way we play obviously um, so I, I I don't know what he's seen I, I I just presume he's basically gone look at the beginning of the season all the refs have got together and said look let's look out for like trailing legs and you know mm. people trying to win penalties this was not, I know what they're saying I know what a trailing leg and uh, getting it tangled up on purpose is yeah this I, I don't not. agree with the principle of it but no. that this was not although um, Although there were, have, I have had uh, a contact with uh, Kane Lucas on uh, Twitter, got in contact with the show at FFS Pod, and Kane Lucas did come up with a good point and says, uh, "Well, we didn't deserve the one against Hull, and that's football." And to be honest, 
he's exactly right. We shouldn't have had a penalty against Hull, but we should have had a penalty against Arsenal. So these things do work themselves out. And we're not sitting here ranting away saying we should have beat Arsenal 1-0. We're sitting here saying nil nil is a very good result. We're just exactly. picking them apart as, as moments within the game, not as kind of game changers, if you like. Yeah, um, so a, a draw was a good result. Like I said, they didn't create an awful lot. I think Schmeichel came out at one point and smothered the ball. Uh, Vardy, uh, not Vardy, when um, when Mares basically walked through their entire defence, the goalkeeper saved it. Maybe Musa could have took a snapshot um, at goal. So, yeah, a draw was a fair result, a good, exciting game. And again, it just confirmed we are a good team. We are and, a good and, team. And we're not playing badly. We are playing exactly the same as last year. And basically, if we play like, like that against Swansea, we might score the same amount of goals against Swansea as we did last year. Yeah. You never know. Right, so we've discussed first point on the board of the season. We've talked Mares signing a new contract. Happy days. Uh, let's reintroduce the best and worst eleven for this season. Those of you that are new to For Fox Sake podcast. That, that was the crowd. That was the crowd in the background. Oh, yeah, we do this show live in front of a studio audience, don't we? No. No. Uh, best and worst eleven is... If we invited, then I don't think anyone would, <laughs> would come anyway. Yeah, so we don't bother inviting in the first place. Best 11 and worst 11. They're based on performances. We should have that a we... live show. We should have a live show. We do Sorry, carry on, carry on. Once, once we get a bit bigger, eh? Yeah. A bit more big time. Yeah. For the third time, best and worst 11 is based on performances at the King Power Stadium only. So not a reflection of the footballer's ability as a whole. Just how they performed in 90 minutes at the King Power. Uh, we did it last season. The um, teams are up on the Facebook page. Uh, search for Fox 8 Podcast on Facebook if you want to see them. Uh, there's some big names in the worst 11 and some not so big names in the best 11 based on their performances. Have we got anyone to add after game one at the King Power Stadium? Uh, I do, and I've um, not told you about this anyway. this was... You haven't. This is going to come as a surprise to me. Have you mentioned his name already? Yes. I think I know who you might pick. Yeah, I think you do. Um, I, I'm going to put forward, because obviously you have to agree with it, um, I'm going to put forward Granit Xhaka. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Centre midfielder, about £30 million, £34 million pounds from Borussia Mönchengladbach. M- Mönchengladbach. Borussia Mönchengladbach. Flat- that's my, that's... We've, had, we've had Mark Battenberg and Borussia Mönchengladbach. It's my, my, uh, my fancy team name. Fox 8 Bake Off. It's my fancy football team. Okay. Bruce and Monk and Flatjack. Is it actually? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it really is. Wow. Um, there was me thinking that was an original off the top of your head just then. No, it's um Anyway, but... Granite Xhaka. I like He's... it. It's, it's it's a PG name, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. It's it's much more uh, say out loudable than most fantasy football team names. Exactly, but Granit Xhaka, he's um, he's a defensive midfielder. If you look what Arsenal need, they need a spine of a team, don't they? They need a real commanding centre half to go alongside Koscielny and to help out when Mertesack is injured, which is all the time. Um, they need a, a, a strong midfielder, a good defensive strong midfielder, and they need a centre forward or two. Um, and they've bought this defensive midfielder, and I thought he was superb um, alongside Coquelin. I don't quite know why Coquelin was playing. Also, he should have been sent off. We forgot to mention that. Yeah, should have got a second yellow. Absolute blatant. Fairly early in the second half as well, wasn't it? Battenberg again. Um, basically, Granit Xhaka, I thought he had a, a brilliant game. He, he tackled well, which is what he's there for. He then uh, he passed very well. He switched the ball out wide to either Walcott or to Oxlade-Chamberlain brilliantly. And there was one in particular in the first half. There was a tackle. I'm sure he started, I think it was on Drinkwater, he started the tackle about 10 yards away and came in and won the ball cleanly and then kind of did a pirouette and just knocked the ball out wide. And I just, I, it was fantastic. So I, I think he had a brilliant game. He's got both of the qualities that you want from a central midfielder. Yeah. He's got the ability to absolutely bruise people, big player, good in the tackle, but a lot of... Players like that don't know what to do with it when they've got it, and they need someone five yards away from them to give it to quickly so that yeah. they can do the passing. I, I Granit xhaka has got both, and he looked very, very good with and without the ball. Yeah, I don't think he's going to actually score many goals. I don't think he's going to go beyond the halfway line. No, but he's going to do that job that nobody's exactly. done for Arsenal since the likes of Vieira. Exactly. So that that's that's who I think. Well, that's who I think should go in the team. Do you agree? I completely agree. He could so, be the first addition. Granit Xhaka is the first addition to the uh, best and worst of the season. Remember, that's obviously games at the King Power, not including Leicester. Doesn't matter who they are. It's just their performance on the day. Um, yeah, fantastic. So at the time of recording, Rob, mm. um, what, what day is it? What, what's my name? Uh, Monday the 22nd. It's Monday. Uh, the draw for the Champions League 
takes place on the 25th. Mm. On what, Friday? Thursday? Uh, Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Thursday. So we'll know by the time we do the Swansea yeah. game comes around and we'll do a podcast just after the Swansea game. All being well. Yeah, we'll know who's who's what and what's who. So we've we've previewed the Champions League. If you listen to the previous episode, we go into it in great detail. Um, but yeah, so listen out out there. Everyone who's listened to this, it's the 25th. Uh, try and find on the internet or wherever when the draw's taking place. Uh, if anyone at work turns around and says, what are you doing? You say, I'm listening to the Champions League draw. It's a once in a lifetime. Go away. Yeah, um, we'll we'll put yeah. it up on our social media channels once it's all confirmed as well. And what I think we'd like to hear what everybody thinks about the draw. Who we've got? Are you planning some away trips? Are you looking forward to seeing certain players or teams come down the, the King Power Stadium on what will be massively atmospheric Champions oh, yeah. League football nights? I love Champions League football nights for years and years and years. When Leicester haven't, haven't even been in them. Now Leicester are in them, they're even better. So we'd like to hear your thoughts over the weekend so we can bring them together in the post Swansea podcast. And if you are on Twitter and you do follow at FFSpod, then uh, obviously get involved as well because we'll be trying to tweet from that and following the story. There'll be a lot of social media um, hits and tweets and all that sort of thing going on on the day. So yeah, 25th, something for the diary. Um, And then, of course, a couple of days later, Swansea at home. Now, Swansea... Um, winners on the first day against Burnley and then lost at home to Hull um, who obviously are now going to win the league Hull are, yeah, definitely yeah. Um, now, interesting team they've got Lorente up front they've still got Sigurdsson who I wanted actually to come to Leicester um, who signed a new contract but basically as much as obviously they're you know a decent football team in the Premier League we know what Swansea are about is this three points? yeah I think so. If we play with the same level of intensity that we did against Arsenal, Swansea are a very much a possession-based team as well, but they don't do it as well as Arsenal. And I think we cope with Arsenal very well. I think we'll get more chances to break against Swansea and it could we could easily get a hat full of goals. I agree. I, I think really the marker is the last game against Swansea when I think it was um, Jamie Vardy was out injured. Uh, not injured, he was out uh, suspended. suspended. And um, Leo Joa came in. Not saying that Leo Joa should come into the team uh, for this game in particular, but the intensity that we played and and the the fearlessness. I know it's the hashtag that we like to use or less like to use, but they they were fearless going into that game. And oh no, Vardy's out. This that, and the other. Bang. Was it three nil? No problem. And not saying we're going to go and beat them three nil again on Saturday, but why not? We can. And not saying we should, but we can. Yeah, and we I can think do that. I think. In fact, actually, yeah, three 0 I'm going to go 2-0. I I think that the players and the fans will have an awful lot more confidence after the Arsenal result than they did against after the Hull result. I think Hull can almost be dismissed as another pre-season friendly. I think we had a lot of travelling during pre-season, a lot of commercial commitments. I don't think we were ready to start a Premier League season. Now we definitely, definitely are. Oh, yes, and we're, we're well up to speed now. But also, I mean, that Hull game... We could have, if we scored first, we had three absolute guilt edge chances. Yeah. We score first, we've yeah. won. And that, and we've that, won sh- that, that sharpness looked a bit better there against yeah. Arsenal with the limited chances. You create that many chances against Swansea, you score goals, simple as. Exactly. One more question then, Pete, before we wrap it up for you. Well, I'll go on him. Well, one, one, one thing to say quickly first um, yeah. the display in the cop uh, when the teams came out. Oh, Lovely, lovely, uh, re- really nice. Again, that's the union. And what about FS. the art, the artwork in the South Stand as well? Are you seeing that? The yes. murals on in the concourses, murals as well? on the wall, and all sorts. But uh, well done to the union, union FS boys. Uh, we don't know any of them here at uh, for Fox sake. Um, if you do listen and you remember the union FS, then just pass on our our. Um, we always our, like to our, see our what well you've done. come up with. Exactly, we've always been big supporters of theirs, and all the mu- murals they've been. My personal favourite was the one where they were waving that. There was the 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 bloke wearing the or the person with the big flag and the scarf. I think it was the second one they did last season. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah no, I remember. Yeah, and, and I do like actually. I like the first one. Was like your history is ours. You, no, you you wear our colour. Was it our history is in your hands? Our colours are on your shirts. Something like that. Something nice and Sleep profound stuff. that yeah. Pete Selby Something. can't come up with. Yeah, it was so good. I can't remember. It's a good but, job um, you don't write the Union NFS. I could. I could. You but, could give it a bit more time. Hmm? Could give it a bit more time. Yes. Last, last question for you anyway. Oh, go on in. Sorry, yeah, wrap yeah. Up. Uh, 
Is it imperative within the next couple of games that Claudio Ranieri finds a way to get Ahmed Musa in his starting lineup? Imperative, no. Um, and it just depends on the game. Do, would I start him against Swansea? Yes. Where? Uh, I would start him behind Vardy. Okay. And I'd I'd play the same team that played against um, Hull. Yeah. But I would probably play Armati in midfield instead, um, instead of King or, or King, King or Armati. I thought King played well on Saturday, but um, bring Matty James back. Or bring Matty James back. But that's what I would do because end of the day we're playing against a team who, if you had to put that on paper. Uh, four or five games at home where if you're going to play your attackers in those games, you know what I mean? You're not going to maybe worry about them as much as other teams. Swansea would be one. So why not try it out? Um, If he wants to make half of them play, so maybe keep Albrighton and play Musa behind Vardy, even play uh, Musa out wide in Albrighton's place to keep Okazaki there. Um, I've not got a problem, but I'd like to see Musa start. If he doesn't start, that's fine. But I'd like to see him have longer than a quarter of an hour. Even if the game's going well, if it's going poorly, whatever. Maybe even a half and a half. Maybe something along them lines. Um, well, Akazaki is... keeps it tight for 45 and then Musa comes out and burns him in the second half. Arguably, he, whatever way he wants to go, that's fine. Do I think it's imperative? No. Because he he's you can see what kind of player Musa is like. And I think if he doesn't start for a few games and comes off the bench and does really well... Then that's that's fine as long as end of the day it's all about the team, isn't it? Yeah, of um, course, yeah. And I don't think he's going to lose any hearts um, by not playing from the start. But we can see what kind of player he is. Is it imperative? No. Would I like to see it? Yes. Right, so that's it for episode 45. We'll speak to you after the Champions League draw and after we beat Swansea. 3 0 says Pete, 2 0 says me. Last one. How, how can people get in contact about the Champions League draw, about the Swansea game before the next one? Exactly. If you go on Twitter, then at FFS Pod, at FFS Pod. That's basically for Fox sake short. So at FFS Pod and, on and Twitter. Pod's short for podcast. It's clever that. <laughs> yeah, very very clever. Uh, go on Facebook. If you search for for Fox Eight Podcast, there's a big Facebook group on there where we put all the episodes. I'll just mention one thing: is that uh, what episode number is this? Forty five. Forty five. Yeah. yeah. I didn't put forty four on there, so it will be on there by the time you listen to this. So sorry about that. Uh, there is a YouTube page again, which will have episode forty four and forty five on uh, by the time you listen to this. So there is a YouTube page if you fancy listening to it that way, um, and you can always email the show for fox 8 podcast at gmail.com for fox 8 podcast at gmail.com and once again let us know where you're listening and what you think about the season so far and games coming up or anything about the club the shirt the players contracts players we should sign and we're coming up to the end of the transfer window we're not going to mention that maybe mention it to the next gate uh, the next one yeah, um, next podcast. We'll yeah, do next a, podcast. Do, we'll do a do we need any more bodies quickly. Yeah, you never know what could happen before now and the next podcast, basically. But uh, yeah, so let us know by email or by whatever means necessary. Uh, then tell us where you are and what you think about the podcast and also about Leicester in general. And of course, remember, if we do say something and you do disagree with it, let us know. It's great. Fantastic. Um, it would be great to start the show next week with, right, this is what was said last week. And I disagree. And I, this was said last week, and this person disagrees. That'd be good. I like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Get in contact. Let us know if you think we're talking a load of tribe. Can I listen to the show back and then disagree with what I've said previously? Of course you can. Yeah, I'd be I'd be more than happy to to put you right at the start of the next episode. I will create a pseudonym. I'll create a, a secret name that basically every week complains and uh, says that that Pete's an idiot and talks a load of rubbish. And it would be me. I think. You might need. Some, well, I won't tell anyone. You might need some kind of help. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> See you next time.